Well, let's go ahead and get started for this evening. Very excited to be here with everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Campice. I'm the Managing Director of Con Selmer's Division of Education. Uh, would like to uh, welcome everyone this evening to our inaugural session of the Parent Boosters Monthly uh, webinar. We're very excited about this uh, wonderful track that we're going to have every third Wednesday of the month uh, with Dr. David Vandewalker at the helm. Uh, this is part of five great communities that our Con Selmer Division of Education is hosting currently. Uh, we're also having monthly webinars in regards to student leadership, marching arts, music administration collaborative, as well as our newest community, the HBCU Collective. Uh, this evening uh, with Dr. David Vandewalker, our, we have our guest moderator, Walt Strayton. Walt is the category manager for strings and he runs our string division for Con Selmer and has been with our company now for over five years. Uh, prior role as educational support manager for the Northeast. Uh, Walt has a tremendous background in music education uh, as a director for many years and also an industry veteran. This evening, uh, I'm very pleased to have our good friend David Vandewalker with us. Dr. Vandewalker, uh, I've had the pleasure to know for many years and uh, with his background, it, it serves so many different avenues of music education from uh, his time at Fulton County Schools as uh, the coordinator of performing arts uh, to higher education uh, with uh, his background. Uh, he's a graduate of Baylor University, Central Michigan University and Boston University. Uh, just a phenomenal uh, friend uh, and uh, uh, a pleasure having you here this evening, David. And, uh, you know, with the Parent Booster organizations, we're very excited to have you run this community. I know that many schools across the country uh, depend on the parents uh, to help support the arts in a big way. And uh, we're so fortunate to have you lead this great community for us this evening. Uh, so with that, uh, appreciate everyone being here this evening, share time with Dr. Vandewalker and uh, I'll turn it over to you and uh, Mr. Strait to get things going this evening, David. Great, thank you, Mike. It's a great pleasure. We're glad everybody jumped in to join us today. Again, we're here as a community where we can connect and thrive and help each other in that journey together. So we're so glad you're here. I, I'm a little bit hindered. I'm a little um, kind of the, the standard band director, control freak, obsessive compulsive person. And I can't always see everything in the chat and all the different things going on. So that always has me a little bit stressed in this moment. So know that Walt's here. He's checking out the chat. If you've got questions along the way, feel free to jump those uh, down into the chat section. And then we'll try to address as many of those as we can tonight. So this is a long journey. It's been an exciting time for us to come together as a booster parent community. Uh, I'm a third generation band director. In fact, my grandfather uh, would have turned, he turned, would have turned 100 this past month. And he was my first beginning band director. And he often said, you know, this isn't the same as it used to be. Things are a little different in the band world than when he was more active in his prime. And he's exactly right. In fact, I, um, have coined the phrase that as a music educator, our definition is kind of that we're a CEO of a people-oriented small business with a serious music problem. Now, I'm a serious person about making music, but at the same time, I think it's really important that we understand that as educators, as, as music directors, we're in a people-oriented business. As booster volunteers, you're here as a a servant in a booster organization that's primary purpose, I hope, is to provide additional means for your students' benefit that the school board in your local community can't provide. And there's lots of ways that you can do that, right? So tonight, um, I just want to share a little bit of my journey. For me, I, you know, I started, uh, I moved to Atlanta uh, many years ago, but when I came to Atlanta as a high school band director, um, I joined the program and it was uh, two concert bands, a jazz band and a volunteer marching band. And in fact, they wouldn't even show me a video of the marching band. All I knew is that before I got there, it was music of blood, sweat and tears and a big smiley face on the, on the middle of the field. And so 
in that journey of, of developing the program and growing the program and over the years, you know, fast forward 10 plus years, had the privilege of working with three concert bands and uh, two winter guards and a junior JV guard and three jazz bands. And at the height of the program, um, before more school splits happened, you know, we had over 350 kids in the program and we were able to um, do some really cool things. Not that we couldn't do cool things earlier, but when we grew and we strategized and we pulled our team together, there's no question that what we were able to provide for our kids was a better opportunity, a more fulfilling enrichment. And so I hope that's why you're here, uh, to join the community, to find ways to connect with others, to find ways to learn new things that wherever you are in your journey, I grew up in a one town high school of a hundred kids in band and we were all in band and we all marched and I had great experience. And so, um, you know, whether it's a small town, a metro area, a rural area, urban area, um, it doesn't matter. Kids are kids, and you're here to make a difference in the lives of kids. And that's what we're about in the booster community. So I'm so glad you're here. I want to just kind of um, share some things that as we move through uh, the organization in in growing through the community every month. I want you to be here ready to share your wins. We need to celebrate. There have been so many challenging things this year. There have been so many things that you probably couldn't do as a booster club as you, you were used to doing. That's the way we've always done it. Well, this is the perfect time to burst that cloud, right? So there have got to be some things that you're proud of doing. And so what I want us to do is each month when we come together to make sure that we make time to celebrate and share our wins. And so what, what I want us to do in this moment, as we share our wins, um, Elise is going to throw a, a, a Padlet link in um, the, the chat there, and you should be able to click on that link to Padlet and see what I see right here, okay? So I'm going to bring this over because I see a little bit. Now I'm seeing some chat. It's cooperating with me. And so <clears throat> you can see that Padlet for wins. And when you come to Padlet, I suspect that many of you are new to Padlet. I found it um, as an administrator with my elementary music folks. But I found that it's a really great opportunity for us to collaborate and to share uh, whether we're virtual or whether we're in person. Because, you know, a lot of times when we brainstorm or come together in a meeting, we don't always... Um, well, let's just say this way. I don't know about in your booster club, but in my booster clubs, there are always two or three people that kind of like to steal the show and they made sure that their opinion was always heard. And there were other people with great ideas, but they were kind of timid to really share what they thought. So Padlet, I love because we can all add to it. And whether you're um, shy or not, I mean, you, everybody's everybody's point matters and everybody's opinion matters. And we get to do that. So if you're looking here, you can see down here in the corner, there's a little circle with a plus sign. If you click that plus sign, whoops, you will, I'm going to switch into my actual online here. When you click that plus, you're going to see a new Padlet here. Okay. So I already see an anonymous. We had a live concert. Now I'm going to ask you while you're putting in your Padlet, go ahead and tell us um, again, the name of your program and what state. That way, if people um, like your idea and they need follow-up information, they might have an idea who to reach out to, okay? So I see we had a live concert with, excited to have our band banquet this coming Saturday. That's huge. It's probably the first time you've come together as a community, isn't it? So I'm going to quit blabbing. I'm going to give you a few seconds to ponder and share in your Padlet. Again, find the circle at the bottom of your bottom corner of your screen, looks like this, click on that button, and then you'll be able to type, it's kind of like a post-it note, a digital post-it note, okay? I'm gonna hit update and we'll see some more. Uh, that was Bryan High School in Texas. It's about ready to have that. We're getting a whole bunch of ideas here. This is great, okay? Had our first outdoor concert band, uh, co concert ever and loved it. You may find that that was so awesome, you wanna do it again. We had a pops concert every year where we brought in our feeder programs and our elementary orphan ensembles and became a really cool event. 
you might find that you want to do that more often, even after the pandemic. Okay, normal as possible. There you go. All right. Had a drive in. That's cool. Shout out to Altoona. You had a spring marching band. I saw that. How exciting. All right. So thanks for sharing. I hope more of you will do that and it'll keep updating. And this, this link will stay active. So what's cool is we use this from month to month um, and we use the Padlets. It's going to stay live and you can come back and check this out. And you can even export to a PDF when we start having some other topic discussions along the way. So congratulations on that. Now, I want to have another topic for you. I want you to jump in. Uh, Lisa's going to show a different uh, Padlet link. Okay, this one's going to be the topics link that you'll see in the chat. And this one, I want you to say, okay, we know we're here because we want to support you. But why are you here? What's been your thought process? Why did you want to join the community tonight? There are questions, there are topics that you want to talk about. So while I have a good long list of things that we could talk about. I wanna make sure that we include in the coming months, the topics that you wanna talk about that you need answers for, and that we can share and collaborate together. I see them popping up, okay? So that's gonna help us a lot as we can plan and give you an opportunity to speak into our content topics as we come along, okay? Give you a couple of seconds to give your input there. I'm resisting the temptation to start singing the Jeopardy theme song. You're welcome, by the way. That's great. Parent involvement would like to increase the number of parents involved in our booster club. We're going to talk about that um, a good bit in multiple sessions. We're going to talk about it a good bit coming up in the Consumer Institute Connect that Aaron's going to share with us at the end of the uh, end of this session. So you want to stick around for that. Advocacy in our music programs, we're going to be talking a good bit about that at Consumer Connect in June. Uh, fundraising, we've got um, some opportunities for that. I think that's all on our minds, right? Fundraising and parent involvement, retention of students. I see that coming up a good bit, okay? And how do we start a new program? That's exciting, okay? There's a 501c3 quick form nowadays. So that's kind of exciting if you're just starting out the group. You have three years to do that, but it's a, a short version that almost everybody qualifies for. All right, so this is fantastic. Keep adding to that. Um, I'll be able to come back and check it and review it. Again, these topics are here. If you think of something uh, later tonight after we log off and you want to come back in and click on that link and check your history and go, oh, I want to add that, feel free to. It'll be there and we'll look at it uh, from time to time and check in. Okay, so you've told us why you're here. You've given us some feedback. Now it's time to talk about our topic, inspiration execution. Okay, so bridging the gap. We have lots of ideas. I don't know about you, but a lot of times our booster club will come together. Our booster board would come together. We have lots of ideas and it kind of became like Groundhog Day. Oh my gosh. Um, I feel like we've talked about this before at least once or twice, right? So how do we get from that inspiration to execution? How do we get these great ideas with all these volunteers and how do we get it into practice? Um, and so we have some topics on that. And so we'll have a little uh, a segment of a video segment of some training, and then I'll jump on. Um, so if you have questions during the training, make sure you're, you're putting those down in the chat and Walt can follow up um, when we get uh, to the end of tonight's session. So I'm gonna stop sharing this part of my screen for a second, and I'm going to jump in and grab a video real quick. And we're going to jump into some training. So here we are, Bridging the Gap. Reflecting on some of the greatest accomplishments in recent history, names like Jeff Bezos, Fred Smith, and Steve Jobs emerge, all credited as being visionaries for some remarkable accomplishments. 
Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon, is a combination visionary and master builder of an e-commerce empire. It's noteworthy that he wisely hired others to assist him in the realization of his marketplace vision. Additionally, all of his hires had to be shown care and motivation to complete the tasks on such a grand scale that would meet the expectations of Bezos. Similarly, Fred Smith of FedEx is credited with founding, staffing, and gathering supplies for an overnight air delivery company that no one even knew they needed but discovered that they couldn't live without. Steve Jobs is recognized with creating life-changing technology products, including the home computer, iPod, iTunes, iPhone, and iCloud. Behind Steve Jobs was a team of innovative marketers, designers, and engineers. As I explored deeper into these three inspirational geniuses, I began to find some commonalities between these great masters of innovation and the execution of their inspired visions, finding that a highly skilled team was behind their articulated vision. They employed detailed action plans coupled with adept preparation. And teams were strategically well suited for very specific tasks. Often in volunteer organizations, people are willing to help and serve, but have limited experience. Prior experiences vary from leadership in Campfire Girls and Boy Scouts to Little League sports, elementary school, parent-teacher organizations, or church or neighborhood committees, right? But often the only volunteer experience gained in those settings are limited and general in scope. Previous narrow involvement in volunteer organizations can create an overwhelming feeling when stepping into a service in a music booster organization because the music booster teams are often immensely broad, dealing with everything from uniform care and distribution of a high dollar fundraiser to advocating for music education within the community at large. Bridging the gap between inspiration and execution requires setting goals for your organization. Now in Strategic Boosters Step 1, Strategic Planning, I list three categories. What's possible, what's doable, and what's best next? Now, these goals might be musical, like learning new literature, or playing at a new venue, performing at the Meyerson Center for the first time, or out of necessity you need new instruments, or uh, more instruction, or uniforms. You know, after listing your ideas and goals and exploring what's possible, what's doable, and what's best next, for your organization, begin to gather and communicate your plans to your team to help you attain these ambitions. I'm excited to say that we will have a new video course launching in September that will walk Booster Clubs through the entire strategic planning process and help in the identification of organizational goals and strategies. The focus of this training today is to explore modern booster club organizational plans. A modern booster organizational plan defines the volunteer as one who actively directs or manages others to a common goal. As you gather your team, seek to clearly define the task or project you're asking them to do. The importance of definition of plans became evident to me when we had a vacancy uh, for our uniform team manager position. The VP for support, the title we had at that time, called people and then they asked them if they were willing to serve in a various capacity. Uh, he had a variety of responses and most of which found people interested in helping but not really willing to take on such a monumental role. So we had to ask ourselves, was the role truly monumental or did we lack concrete job descriptions that broke down tasks and responsibilities, which included timelines? We pondered how to solve the problem and determined there needed to be a clearly shared vision with a specific plan of action to attract a volunteer with the right skills to accomplish the task. Generally, volunteers will respond affirmatively to very specific tasks in a clear time schedule. This is especially true when we pair tasks with perceived volunteer talents and or skill sets. 
Therefore, be prepared to share your broad vision statement coupled with well-defined and concise specific volunteer tasks to allow your comprehensive vision to take shape. Begin to shape the plans of action for each detail in your booster organization by putting the details on paper and storing all the plans in one consolidated location, whether it's a notebook or a computer folder or um, a folder stored in the cloud. By creating this complex but clear plan of action for each event in which your booster organization takes part is critical. Daniel Levinton writes, Finding things without rummaging saves mental energy for more important creative tasks. So, of course, he's right in that regard, right? The more we can have things defined and laid out and easy to find for our team, the more successful they'll be. So after each event or fundraiser or performance, tweak those plans of action and make changes to the original document, allowing opportunity to improve the plan. Now, over the years, new volunteers will step in and glean from the past experiences and they'll make plans for a specific event stronger and more innovative, but they'll benefit by having that back knowledge and that historical institutional knowledge to inform their choices. You know, the adage, the devil's in the details, has a lot of truth to it, doesn't it? Small errors can have large consequences. So seek to be clear, thorough, and careful in your task explanations and management. Now, timelines must be developed and thus followed to limit challenges with completion of tasks. Consider enlisting a small team of people with different levels of experience in the organization, as well as different skill sets and talents. Spend an hour brainstorming on a specific topic, let's say a night of jazz event. So in the first 15 minutes, make a list of everything and anything one might need to create a specific event. Spend the next 15 minutes deciding on how many of those brainstorming ideas could be broken down again into even more specific categories. For the last 30 minutes, create as many detailed lists for the top three categories that would require the most level of detailed preparation for the event to be successful. Once your hour's been concluded, create action items for that team. Ask each person to take ownership of specific categories remaining on the master list of topics that will need further detailing. Now, ask each team member to solicit the advice of two other people in the completion of their brainstorming details for their assigned lists. Find a date to convene the team within the next two weeks. That's important. You don't want to let too much time expand. Now, in this meeting, share the newly acquired information. Okay, so now you've gotten brainstorming input and you've expanded the scope by each person on the team getting advice from two other people. Now, creating detailed plans is surprisingly easy at this point, using sure methods and timelines for each creation. As your volunteer team works through details for each task, the risk of surprise and crisis management is significantly reduced. Careful and thoughtful execution of plans allow for good volunteer retention as well as multi-generational booster volunteers. In the words of Jim Collins, good to great, this national bestseller, he said, once the details are defined, the team will know where the bus is going. So the next task is finding the right people to get on the bus and get them sitting, this is critical, get things sitting in the right seat. Strong volunteer teams thrive in knowing their assignment and getting in their groove. In our development of our organization at Harrison, our bus was more like just cruising down the road and all of a sudden you'd see somebody on the side and you'd slide the window down and you'd yell out the window, hey, we're headed to the game, you wanna go? And then they'd say yes. And then we'd reach out, yank them onto the bus and say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, and keep on hauling down the road. Except now we all know that getting someone to say yes is a really good thing for a volunteer, but not if we keep on moving down the road and we leave that volunteer stranded to try to find things out on their own, right? 
So a little work on your part, thinking through the type of person needed for each job will go a long way in building a healthy booster organization, as well as helping to effectively and efficiently reach our goals. People will want to help, but need guidance that will allow them to be successful. Pairing an introverted seamstress with a uniform team manager position is a no-brainer, right? However, placing an outgoing creative type who was willing to help would say yes on the road of life and throwing them into a room repairing uniforms and sewing buttons is not a good use of volunteer energy. That outgoing creative type might be coupled with marketing and recruiting positions in your organization. They would likely be a lot more successful and how will they do as a volunteer? Yeah, pretty well, don't you think? and they'll have a lot higher probability of enjoying their volunteer experiences because they were doing something they were well suited to do. And if they enjoy doing and feel successful in what they did, our rate of retention in keeping that volunteer is exponentially higher. With these leaders in place, you'll be set to develop great plans using people to their full potential, creating a positive situation, allowing for great goals to be accomplished. Peter Drucker wrote, great leaders think of the needs of the opportunities. Indeed, groundbreakers make plans and understand that planning is something that occurs with everyday decisions that culminate into an extraordinary occasion. Behind every successful music program, there's a team well-suited for their tasks that has been armed with a vision and detailed action plans making their music program the best it can possibly be. This will allow your team to discover the realms of possibility, what's really doable, and making sure that they bridge the gap from inspiration to execution. All right, so there's our training module. And I know that you've got lots of questions there. So make sure you're putting them there into the elements there. I'm just gonna show you here. Um, this is maybe where we fleshed out an event that happened by the time we did all that brainstorming, we came together and put things together in different stages. And this is with the punch list that you'd come together um, and find as your team would be working on that the various event planning guides. And then once you've got all that detailed information, see, now you can decide, all right, so for this event, PR, this is what we need. Ticket sales, this is what we need. And then look right here, the events day needs. Okay, so you'd have a list for all these different stages of the prod of the event, but then it tells you how many adults, how many kids, how many people you need, what types of roles you need. Okay, um, and that's really critical in creating a successful implementation of the plan. I don't know, but for us, we had a challenge matching roles to the volunteers, like we were talking about in the, the training video. We had a, I remember vividly, we had a, a fruit sale and we had a great team or two ladies that were amazing. They did a wonderful job. They had a wonderful delivery system. The order was great. It was so well organized in the cafeteria and there was like tons of boxes of fruit. I can't even imagine how much there was there. But at the end of the event, they both felt defeated because we had budgeted to sell $6,000 in fruit and they only made 4,000. And they were like, we feel like we need to resign and let someone take it over. And I was like, no, wait a minute. You can't do that. You were successful. We didn't fulfill the support mechanism for the organization because we didn't tell enough people we were selling fruit. So we needed to make sure that, see, both of those ladies, they were great organizers, but they weren't necessarily great cheerleaders for the organization or telling people enough about how to, or that we were actually selling fruit. So that became a real pivot point for us. And then we started doing a bunch of investigation and I spent a bunch of summers um, researching and learning. And I came to this conclusion that uh, I wanna make sure um, I'm sharing my sharing my screen with you here or not. Um, You're not right now, David. Thank you. Okay, so um, I, I just had that brain fart. So forgive me, everybody. Let me get you on board with where I am. Thank you, Elisa, for 
cueing me in there. So we came to this conclusion here, okay, that we've got to match our roles like we were talking about in the share and the training here. But then we discovered, okay, so if we could figure out how to put our people together in those tasks, like a business would, we could go a long way. And so what we discovered is there were lots of different mechanisms. We found this, this worked for us because it's kind of like a crayon box and crayon colors. And I don't care who you are, whether what community you're in, everybody understands a box of crayons, right? So we have our razzle dazzle reds, our sunshiny yellows, our fuzzy wuzzy browns and our misty blues. But when you look at that, you see that the razzle dazzle red folks are task oriented and our misty blues are task oriented, but our razzle dazzle reds, they're outgoing and task oriented and our misty blues are kind of reserved and hard workers, but behind the scenes folks. And then we had the sunshiny yellows. Those were our cheerleaders. So what we discovered was we needed to make sure we had some sunshiny yellow people on our fruit sale next year. So when those ladies who were razzle dazzle reds, they were outgoing and task oriented, they could manage it really well, but we needed more people to help market the project. So we came to the conclusion that as an organization, it's all about the project and it's all about the crayon box. What size is the project? Is it this cute little butterfly, simplistic little three or four little butterflies? You might only need a few crayons for that. Or does it get a little more detailed here, like in our second middle picture here, where there's a variety of colors in some detail, or is it gonna be a wall mural the size of the band room or the orchestra room with all this intricate details of this large mural, okay? So the top one, the little bitty one, that's gonna take like a box of what, eight, okay? Crayons to color that. And you might want the big box of 64 crayons for the middle picture, but you might need the honker box of 108 or whatever it is to do this. And so that carries over into our projects. We need to define the projects and make sure that we have all the spectrum of colors represented to make our projects truly great. So we found ways, and we're gonna talk about this in the Consumer Institute uh, parent, we're gonna talk about of how do we use and identify different people. But I think if you just think about the personality types, you can tell from a rough draft of who might be who in your program, but here's the key, okay? so. We took a project team, we did exactly what we were talking about in the training, where we defined our roles of the program, we spelled them out, we detailed them out, and then we assigned them the color codes, the red, brown, blues, and yellows here. So we know in this concert in the park, and this is blown out for a large project, it's the concert in the park where I was telling you where we had um, you know, all three of our concert bands, three of our jazz bands, two percussion ensembles, three winter guards performing, our middle school feeder programs, and elementary orf ensembles. So this was like maxed out off the chart event, but we would have a great community event and raise 20 grand in, in the same process, okay? So, but you can see here, we've, we've got people well suited for their temperaments, their skill set, and their talents. And we're connecting those dots to create a great team. So we determined that we have to decide how big is our project, how many people do we need? It goes back to those project planning guides uh, that I was showing you to determine how many people you need. And then making sure that we fill our crayon box with all four personality types. And then our, our plans see, tell us how many yellows we need or how many reds or how many whatever. Okay, so hopefully that gives you some ideas about how um, to think about some new things as you're uh, planning over the summer and working on getting your different projects um, figured out. And again, we're going to talk about more in depth as we go along, but I have a challenge for you. What are your big three? What are the three biggest program events that you have that would impact your program for next year? And what three would you be? I'm going to ask you to ponder that. And by the time we come together in June, you've decided which three with your team are going to be the most important. And we're going to ask you to spend that one hour together, whether it's on Zoom or in person, face to face, to go through a brainstorm session for at least one of those big three between now and next month. That's my challenge to you. Now, it's time for questions. I know you have a bunch. 
Walt, jump in and see where we can go with this, my friend. Thanks, David. I'll tell you one of the things that's fun is watching the very interactive chat going forward. Because we have big picture stuff, and then we have some really interesting, I think, fun questions that are uh, operational. So let me give you some low-hanging fruit. And then I think at the end, we want to, uh, maybe I can tease you to frame, because with all these great sessions that are coming up, first starting at CSIC, um, one of the questions that came in, what will be the broad topic areas? We've already touched on several of them. So let's save that for the end as a lead-in for CSIC. Specific questions that came in, let me direct to you. When a uh, gentleman wrote, do you use something like Google Drive uh, or what platform do you use to make sure that documents are, are accessible real time for anything? And do you have a specific recommendation of what would prove to be a best practice for you and your teams as well? Yeah, I think the Google Drive asset is a, a really um, beneficial uh, it's pretty user friendly and it's free. I think the challenge with the Google Drive is there There are, I have to think of the name of it. Uh, Lisa, you may um, have that, I'm not sure, but um, I think it's a team Google Drive, but there's a, there's a conglomerate Google Drive as opposed to the ones that we all have as a personal Gmail account attached to our drives. But it's important to get that one because what happens is parents roll in and out of the organization. If someone does work on their drive, that's affiliated with their drive and they're gone, then the organization is left high and dry without access to the, those files. So the Google Drive is a great tool, but you have to keep that in mind and make sure that you're storing hard copies um, in an archival process. So I'm like I mentioned, I confessed early on, I'm obsessive compulsive. I have every um, project team download their files uh, out of their Google Drive onto a USB drive, and we store those on a, a program-wide external drive. So there's in the band room, in the orchestra room, course room, there's an external hard drive of everything from last year. And it's cloud-based. Now, some of the groups, um, the larger groups that I consult with use Basecamp. And I use Basecamp with another, um, with the Fire Robin Association for Music Education that I'm executive director for. And we use that. And um, there's other apps out there, but most of those apps are related to per-person fees. And the, the Basecamp is $99 a month. And it's for anybody and everybody. And it's a really great management tool and everything. Communication is um, all inclusive and it's project management and integrated schedules and, and things like that. And all that can be done in Google. Um, but if you're a larger program, um, it might be worth the investment to consider that. Um, obviously smaller programs starting out, the Google Drive is gonna be the, the key. Now, some school districts use, um, Office 365 and Teams and, and OneDrive and those help, but I find those a little more problematic because fewer people, you have to all be on the Microsoft network for that. So that's a little harder, but sorry, that's a long answer Walt. we got more questions. A good answer. Here's one that'll be, that'll be fun. Now, we've all lived in this world. Um, what experience have you had with retaining a graduated or graduated band parents? The child has graduated or gone off to a job and moved on. Uh, we know that when your kids move to college or work, we all kind of tend to drift off a little bit. Can you share some experiences or what you've discovered or best practices to sustain involvement? Well, you know, I've, I've said forever, there's too much work and not enough time. And I've never met a booster club yet that has too much money or too many volunteers. <laughs> How about you? Anybody ever heard of one? I haven't. <laughs> so my thing is, why do we want to have people invested in the program and let them go away and go back to the hospital and volunteer, or go to another civic organization and volunteer? We just got there. We just got them trained, if you will. Well, let's don't let them go. Let's find ways. Now, obviously, we want to make sure that the next generation of leader has an opportunity to, for their moment in the sun and to grow and keep the organization fresh. But as I said, there's still plenty of work to do. Let's use their institutional knowledge and let's keep them engaged. And maybe we do that through um, one of the things that I've seen that works really great is a fans club, financial assistance for needy students. And so the fans club are alumni folks that do one fundraiser a year. It keeps them engaged together and they generate money. And then those funds come back either as specific scholarships or it gets applied to the general budget to help offset those fees that we don't really always get collected, right? So that's kind of an interesting idea for that, perhaps. 
And then, yeah, that's, and that's super. Um, this is an interesting one. We're going to jump to the other side of the fence. You ready? All how right. Do you, how do you handle directors that operate in the moment rather than strategically planning three or four months in the future? Yeah. You know, I think that, um, I think the, the easiest way about that is to know a couple of things that we're, as a booster club, we're a partner in education. Okay. So we're there to support. And when we have some personality groups um, that make that kind of challenging, um, I think it, it's how do we fr frame it in a way that as a parent team, we have a project we're going to work on and we'd like to schedule the schedule a meeting and ask you some, a set of four to six questions and get a timeline. And I think it's kind of like most of us, like we talked about in the training, people are more responsive to a specific ask, right? So if you go in with the project in mind and you see that there's, that you're there to support them and not confront them necessarily, and you get specific questions that can help set up your timeline, and then you're successful with that, then you have another opportunity to try that again and again. And I think over time, um, rarely is it in my, my experience with directors, rarely is it an unwillingness. Most of the time it's because they're just flat overworked and have too many hats they're supposed to wear and they're not good at planning. That's they're musicians, they're artists. Um, so if you can help them in a gentle way, um, I think that most of them will welcome it, but um, I'm not surprised that some of our folks out there are less skilled in that area. Some of us are total type A and, but others are, are not, that's true. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, there's, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm personally just so encouraged and enthused as, as you look at all the questions that have come in both on the chat and then also on the Padlet. And frankly, it's a real table setter for I think the great things to come. Someone had, had, had issued the request, David, if you could, because we know that there's a variety of seminars that are gonna be coming once this group continues in and to and through the fall. What would you suggest will be the broad headings? I know you've had a chance to plot some of those out. Are there any topics that come to top of mind that will be you know, especially addressed in the forthcoming sessions? Well, I, I, I certainly, um, I alluded earlier, but that's why I wanted that, the Padlet to be used tonight to really get their, um, their session topics. But I can tell you, for example, uh, we're gonna share a link to um, the Virtual Booster Institute that's available and hosted um, in conjunction with, presented by TBA, Texas Bandmasters, and sponsored by Con Selmer. Um, and we've been doing that Booster Institute for about 10 years, but um, maybe it's more by now. But um, we have six different sessions. And so we talk about strategic planning. We talk about um, building an army of volunteers. We talk about building a business blueprint. We talk about staying compliant with government um, practices um, with the 501c3. We talk about um, how to build strategic fundraisers. We talk about how to um, use strategic communication and branding our programs. And so I see us talking about all those things in this community as well, as long as those are the things you're interested in coming back for, because there's no point in talking about stuff you don't want to hear about. So if those are topics of interest, you might check out the, the TBA um, and we'll have a, a link for that. Maybe at least I can throw that in the um, chat at some point. Um, but you'll have that. And so we'll also be talking about um, a variety of things, but it's, I think we're going to talk ab about um, built in the fall. When we come back, we're going to talk about strategic planning. We're going to be talking mostly about building relationships and building those army of volunteers. Um, and we'll come back and talk a little bit about some of a little deeper dive on what we've done um, today, because at the beginning of the year, we want to make sure that our teams are, um, we're going to be filling in the gaps. And so we want to be mindful of how we do that when we're trying to start the year, because that's a perfect time to do that. So um, when we come back in August, uh, we're going to talk about some ways to do that at, at the jump start of the year. Well, for sure, there is a series, of, obviously, of sequential opportunities that, that our friends here tonight can jump into. And maybe this is an appropriate time, either Aaron or Lisa, um, is now a chance to talk about Con Summer Institute Connect and, uh, and some op future opportunities are gonna be coming for our friends who have joined us this evening. 
Yeah, and Aaron, I think I can ask you, but uh, and or Lisa, we can take these and export these questions, and we can use these as um, triggers of what we'll talk about in the Facebook group. So if we can throw that, and we talk about Aaron, you can talk about that, and we can start using the Facebook group to answer some of these questions in between our sessions. That's a that's a fabulous idea. Thank you, David. My name is Aaron Cole Steele. And I am the director of educational programs for Con Selmer. And I've seen in the chat a lot of great questions, but one of the hot topics is what in the world is CSIC? <laughs> so I want to tell you a little bit about that. And I'm super excited to. Uh, it stands for Con Selmer Institute Connect and it is our signature event that we hold every summer. It will be online June 14th through the 17th. Um, the best way to describe it for newbies is probably the most practical and inspiring professional development you'll ever go to. Um, we have always had tracks for music educators, including band, strings, new teacher, collegiate, music administrator. But what's exciting about this year is we have a whole new three track day that's gonna include marching arts, student leadership and parent booster. So if you'll just indulge us for, for a minute and a half, we have a really cool promo video to show you. And then David and I will come back on at the end to talk specifically about the tracks that pertain to you. Fantastic. So that gives you a brief overview of what Consumer Institute Connect is about. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. For our music educators or directors that are joining us tonight, we would love to provide you with a 20% off discount code, which is CSI Educators 20. And for our band directors, this really, it's more than just a series of Zooms, okay? This is highly engaging. It's a, a great opportunity, opportunity for everyone to get together, talk shop, reconnect, bounce back after what I am sure we would all agree is the most challenging year you've ever gone through. So this is the perfect way to re-energize. Um, and then very special for this year, we have for the parent boosters and directors out there, a track specific to students on Thursday. And it's only $10 per student. It goes from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And the presenters that are lined up are just absolutely all-star, including Dr. Tim, Frank Troika, Matthew Rao, you see everybody here on the screen. Um, but you know, a great opportunity for those students to learn how to become better leaders and to lead their peers. Um, they have breakout sessions planned that they even break out into woodwind, brass percussion, battery percussion, color guard, and they end the whole day with a concert by world champion Blue Devils Drum and Bugle Corps. What a great way to end the night. And that's a great segue into our other new track, which is Parent Booster, that same evening from 6 to 9 p.m., and it's free. And this is just a, a great way, too. We're building all these communities and then we have CSIC. So you're having this first wonderful webinar with David tonight and everything he's talking to, talking to you about is leading to the next one that we have at CSIC. So David, you wanna talk about that a little bit? 
Yeah, so really excited. The first hour, we're going to be talking about uh, building strategic community and how do we build relationships and, and how do we structure our program that makes it an engaging community that people become loyal and attached to. And I'm so excited to have uh, Amanda Drinkwater and Alfred Watkins come and share uh, two legendary band directors, uh, one from Marcus uh, and Lassiter High School, um, and then also um, one of the most legendary orchestra teachers in the country, young young Kim from Johns Creek um, High School, uh, is going to be sharing some of his ideas and how he engages his community in the orchestra world. And then in the second hour, we're going to be talking about um, strategic fundraising. And my colleague and friend, uh, Kim Everett, is a senior a project manager from Coca-Cola with over 30 years invested um, in that corporate environment. And she um, was a huge part of structuring the whole, my, my second booster book, um, Strategic Plans for Successful Booster Clubs. Um, and so she's a, a, one of the masterminds behind all of that. And then the third hour, we're going to be talking about strategic communication um, and how we are effective in our storytelling as music programs. And uh, my good friend, uh, Charles Locks is gonna be coming um, from the Alpharetta Orchestra, um, also a Midwest level uh, program. Um, and so he's gonna be coming and sharing his ideas and how he uses it, uh, different strategies and communication um, in his program. So three hours of, a, of some deep dives on three critical topics for the summer. Oh, I think, are you muted? I'm, or I'm muted, one of the no, two. No, that's me. I was just saying, I, and I'm pretty sure Elise has probably put those links into the chat, but consumerinstitute.com, there's a specific link for student leadership and parent booster as well, but we hope to see you there. Um, my email, I'll pop into the chat as well in case you have any more questions, but thank you, David, for giving me that opportunity. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, we have just, uh, I just want to share a couple of thoughts. Some of you, I, I shared questions about, um, I'm going to share my screen for one last little uh, moment here. And uh, just to let you see, uh, there's the dates of the Strategic Booster Institute on that. Um, if any of you are interested, the thing about it, it's, it is a ticketed event um, as, as a full day institute there, but it's uh, the ticket is for 10 boosters to attend all um, together in that context. So if that's something you're interested in, and again, um, I, I hope we will put, um, again, I'm not watching the chat as much, but hopefully so we'll put in information about the Facebook group. And so I really want to encourage you, that's going to be a way that we can um, engage together in between our sessions and we can stay connected. And we want to hear from you. We want to hear your feedback. I mean, here's what's cool about the community is that we've got so many folks doing great things and, you know, not everything's going to work for me um, in Kennesaw, Georgia, like it works for you in your community, but there may be something I'm doing over here in Kennesaw, Georgia that might be great for you. And so I can't wait for us to have a chance to share with each other as we uh, connect and thrive with each other's help. So thanks for being here tonight. I hope you'll spread the news. If you've got other um, music programs in your community or school district, and you want to reach out and share with their music teachers or friends that you have in your community so they can join us for the free version of Conselmer Connect and then also the Facebook group. Let's uh, The more the merrier because that's where we're going to get all the help because we never know who's got that next amazing idea. So until next time, have a great, safe, and enjoyable end of the school year, and we'll catch you at the next event. Thanks for being here, everybody.